sample questions on the chat from the community. Okay, welcome. You know, uh, I'm working a lot of project. So they came to meeting also they showing their identity or their faces, you know, this is a trusted thing. So yeah. I'm very happy to see you and Luca starting the questions. Luca, can you add me here? Yeah, we we are on the group chat, Luca. <laughs> Luca writing on chat. Just join. Just join, Luca. On numara değil mi bu arada? Tora benziyor adam. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, should we wait for him? Gelecek yeah, gelecek yeah, durun. Yeah. Ben söyleyeceğim size şu an. Ben her şeyi A'dan Z'yi sizler için çevireceğim arkadaşlar. <gülüyor> Ee, şey diyor bu arada ben onu da çevireyim. Hafif heyecan var bende de kusura bakmayın. Şuradan hatta şeyi de başlatmış olalım. Ee, sizlerle beraber olduğum için çok mutluyum diyor. Burada olmak çok iyi bizim için diyor. Ve diyor hani böyle yüzde konuşmalar vesaire bunları çok sevdiklerini söylüyor. Ve çok mutluymuş. Yani özetle bu daha demin konuştuklarımız. So uh, I ask questions for you. Uh, after this, I translate for the Turkish community. I am uh, upload on upload this video on YouTube too. Uh, okay, where's ah, okay? Oh. Luca uh, has a error on an internet connection. I think. Yeah, he could be having <laughs> some issue. Yeah. But, I mean, we can get started as soon as uh, as, as he can. can yeah. Go. Yeah, he, he can join. He's gonna join. No, no over there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so we know your game. Also, I like the game. Uh, I'm looking on your white paper. I see a lot of yeah. work on here. Okay, Anthony. So, uh, what do you think about it? What What is the crypto monkeys? You know? What is the like the concept of the game? Yeah, yeah. So basically. The whole idea behind this game, we came up with this idea back in the in the start of the year. So we were seeing lots of different games gaining traction. At that time, there were there were games that were getting pretty successful. There was like I I, I remember really clearly about Crypto U. I remember I remember Crypto Cars and those early stage games. And when you looked at them, it, they were just like they were not good games. They were kind of crappy games, and they were gaining traction really fast because they they were they were, pay, were paying here really high. And being able to attract lots of lots of players, mm -hmm. but on the other hand, their entire economic system was pretty unsustainable. So those games, if you did a, a an analysis there, a, mm -hmm. a rigorous analysis, you'd see that they couldn't last last for for for a long time because their their economic foundations uh, weren't really solid. And also, you could see that they had no no real plans. To develop an, an actual enjoyable game to play, they were mm -hmm. uh, capitalizing on the hype of the play to earn games. They were allowing people to make money fast, mm -hmm. but uh, this money was being made on the backs of the players that, that came later. So the players that came later on would always lose money and always be stuck with a game that they couldn't play and that no one wanted to play. Actually, uh, that without we, we without talking about the outright scams and people being getting robbed on this market. So. It was a very hyped market, lots of cash uh, flowing, lots of money, lots of, of people joining, and very few quality games. Yeah. And when we, when we looked at it, what we saw was an opportunity. I mean, uh, we had an, a nice team. Uh, we know a lot about, a lot about token, tokenomics. We know a lot about um, uh, blockchain development, mm -hmm. and we had a, this contact with the with Giuliano, who is our artist. He's a great 3D artist. And we started talking about it. So, so Victor brought us together, me and Giuliano. Uh, actually, Lucas came came, came in a, a little late, a, a little bit later. <laughs> we started develop a game that was meant to look good, so have great graphics, have a solid economic foundation. So we are actually implementing lot lots of concepts there that came that came from DeFi, that, that came from other areas. And the in the idea is that the game can last uh, forever. So the, the game will, will never actually die in the same sense as the others did. It's obviously gonna pay better at first. It's obviously gonna have that curve and, the, and, and that net natural uh, v v value value change. Mm -hmm. But the, the idea is not for it to simply die and and be left there. There are mechanisms in place 
to make the game be re reborn whenever the, the token drops too much and, mm -hmm. and it kind of looks like the game is not going to be profitable anymore. So this is, is the is the angle we are aiming aiming at. We are aiming to build a nice nice looking game with great mm -hmm. mechanics and a solid economic foundation. That's our that's the, the vision for the game. Whoa, whoa. This is, a, this is a so much thing. Okay, arkadaşlar. Ben şimdi ona Crypto Monkeys'in ne olduğunu aslında e, birkaç birkaç soruma cevap verdi. E, you answer my two or three questions. I cannot ask anything for you, but you ask e, you answer it. E, birkaç soruma birden cevap verdi arkadaşlar. Birçok oyun gördüklerini söylüyorlar bu alanda. Yani kripto Dünyasında biliyorsunuz ki birçok oyun gördük ve bu oyunların genellikle sorun yaşattığını, bu oyunların başarısız olduğunu. Also, Luca, welcome. Hello. Bu da Luca arkadaşlar, this is Luca. Ee, başarısız olduğunu söylüyorlar ve hep early de zorladığını söylüyorlar bu oyunların özetle. Güzel oyunlar değil bunlar diyor ve çok fazla ödemeniz gerekiyor diyor. Paying so much, yani çok fazla ödüyorsunuz ve sonunda bütün playerların bir şekilde kaybettiğini söylüyor ve ekonomi sistemlerinin diğer oyunlardan çok farklı olduğunu, üzerine de çok uzun zaman çalıştıklarını söylüyorlar. Bu uzun zamanda hızlı kazanç ümidi veriyorlar insanlara, diğer insanlar, diğer projeler ve para kaybettirdiklerini söylüyorlar. Diğer projelere iyi salladı yani daha demin ve onlardan farklı olduğunu söylüyorlar. Çok iyi bir takımları varmış arkadaşlar ve bu e, takımda daha önce blockchain üzerinde development kısmında tecrübeli insanlar barınıyormuş. Bu tecrübeli insanlar da varmış ve e, oyun içi içerisinde içinde yani grafik dizaynı içinde iki kişi varmış ve bunlar da gerçekten işlerinde çok iyilermiş. Bunlar da buraya koşturuyormuş ve oyunun en önemli şeyi coin'de düşmeler, çıkmalar olabilir diyor. Hani e, normal fiyat değişimleri kesinlikle oyunda olabilir diyor. Fakat oyunu biz sonsuza dek sürecek şekilde ayarladık diyorlar ve asla ölmeyecek bir token, asla ölmeyecek bir oyun yapmak istediklerini söylüyorlar. Yani e, adamlar büyük şeyler planlıyorlar e, ve umarım başarılı olurlar. So you are planning a big thing, you know, uh, Anthony, because uh, stable on the market. I think right now every game is most going to be die, you know, because of the technology or something. But metaverse is changing this situation, you know. So you are the metaverse project also, right? Nice. That, that is a long-term goal. Yeah, to yeah. actually build a metaverse that starts with the game and couples in different features from from other projects and other partners that we we're gonna meet along the way. Mm -hmm. That's the the end, the end idea. Yeah, metaverse projesisiniz, değil mi dedim? Hani gerçekten güzel düşünceleriniz var ama dedim benim için bütün oyunlar ölmeye e, mahkumdur dedim. Hani şu anlık ama metaverse bunu değiştirebilir dedim gelecekte ve o da zaten ilerleyen süreçte metaverse'in e, geleceğini ve zaten bunu amaçladıklarını söylüyor. E, so we are on early for crypto monkeys, Anthony. Uh, yeah, very early, very early. Uh, why did you decide to deploy this project on the Binance Smart Chain? Do you team experience about Binance Smart Chain? Well, so basically, the expertise that our technological team uh, has uh, on smart contracts, particularly me, I, I'm the, the lead developer for the, for the project and CTO, and I also have a lot of experience working on other software projects inside of of Ethereum and other Solidity-based blockchains. The thing mm -hmm. is, we're good at Solidity. Uh, our team has some knowledge on Rust and some other chains, but we're good at Solidity. So the thing is, we wanted to choose a, a Solidity-based blockchain that had a, a huge user base. We didn't want to, to go for a new one because there are pros and cons in choosing the chain, but new chains usually come with less players more marketing help from the community bigger chains come with more players from the start but they don't have such a friendly community yeah See, we were aiming at a a fast fast time to market so we thought it would be better to go for a a huge chain that had the technology we could support support and that also had low, low transaction fees and that's why we chose bsc because it meets all the trick criteria mm -hmm. Other EVMs don't, like Ethereum is too expensive, AVEX is getting to, to be expensive as well. Some other EVM implementations such as the as Aurora and others are have, yeah. have a too, too, too small user base or are too focused on, on DeFi. So we, we try to choose BSC because it's as a gaming hub, we see it as the most important one at the moment. Yeah, okay. 
Uh, I'm writing also uh, as well için oraları tercih tercih etmemişler. Evet arkadaşlar dedim ki neden Binance Smart Chain? Sesi güzel çok gelmez ya. Siz bir ayarlayın oradan chat üzerinden ayarlayın. Dedim ki hani neden Binance Smart Chain'i seçtiniz dedim arkadaşlar. Smart ve ekibinin herhangi bir tecrübesi var mı dedim bununla alakalı. Smart kontratlar konusunda takımının tecrübesinin olduğunu söylüyor. Büyük kullanıcı kaynağı olduğu için Binance Smart Chain'i seçmişler. Ve de ne kadar büyük bir alana hitap ederlerse o kadar çok insana ulaşabileceklerini söyledi. Ve <gülüyor> ekstradan da fiillerin düşük olduğunu söylüyor. Yani Binance Smart Chain'de fiiller olabildiğince az olduğu için biz Binance Smart Chain'i seçtik diyor. Mesela bazı daha düşük yerler var Aurora gibi diyor. Ama oraları tercih etmememizin nedeni small e, user basis. Yani çok az insan olduğu için o ağları kullanan oyunlarını o yöne yöneltmek istememişler. Mantıklı hareketler. E, mantıklı hareket, e, hareketler bence de arkadaşlar. Okay so... E, When and how can we buy banana token or uh, minting monkeys, you know? When? Yeah. So, the, the main opportunity to buy uh, at a discounted price that has already passed. So, mm-hmm. we had a whitelist sale that uh, was very successful about three weeks ago. We also deployed uh, in, the, in the last week the a public sale where people could buy bananas straight from, mm-hmm. from our website uh, at a promotional price. The next banana buying opportunity is at our initial DEX offering. Mm-hmm. It's going to be taking place ne- next week. And next week. Next week. This, yeah, this offer, what's cool about it is you're actually going to be able to buy banana straight from PancakeSwap. Mm-hmm. And what that means is you can immediately start playing the game, earning more bananas, and then you can you can st- they are going to have a market value, so we can sell them back to for the users to, to realize your profits mm-hmm. or you can reinvest them back into the game but the game is going to be fully functional that's the cool thing you're going to yeah. have a fully functional game next week that people are, are going, to, going to be able to be able to, to play and start earning so that's the the main idea you probably heard that we're going to ha- be having three game modes so the, the game we're releasing next week is the mm-hmm. first mode it, we call it fire mode it's a simple click game we're releasing it for people to start playing But we have something huge plan- planned for the for the next three to four months, which is a strategy game that we can we can we can talk more about later, and that's gonna earn way more bananas than the, just the simple farming version. Okay. Yeah, the game the game can pay the players through our banana tokens, mm-hmm. so which increase in value with the entry of new players, partners, and investors. So our biggest gaming inspiration it is Axie Infinity, who economics model keep helping entertaining many peoples. Whoa. This is nice thing. Ee, so arkadaşlar şey dedim hani ne zaman banana token alabiliriz dedim. Ne zaman banana tokunu alıp hani e, bir şeyler yapabileceğiz dedim. Ve bana bir satış yaptıklarını daha öncesinde bir satış yaptıklarını geçen whitelist ile yapmışlar bunu. Geçen haftada yine public sale yapılmış banana token için birazcık geciktik sanırım satın almak için. Ama haftaya arkadaşlar banana tokunu pancake web üzerinden alabilecekmişiz. Ve oyunun çok fonksiyonel bir oyun olduğunu söylüyorlar. 3 ayrı moda olacakmış oyunun. 3 ayrı modunda başlayacak. E, Bakmışsındır diyor. Ben biliyorum ama videoyu hazırlamadım. Ee, Luca e, bana demişti bekle birazcık daha sonra videoyu atacağız diye. Zaten bu ama toplantısından sonra tahminimce video gelir. Bu modlardan bir tanesi farming mod açılıyor arkadaşlar. Farming mod açıldığı zaman banana tokenımızı kullanabileceğiz. Aynı diyor modelleme olarak Axie Infinity gibi. Axie Infinity modelini örnek almışlar bunu yaparken. Ama tabii ki ondan da daha iyi olduğunu iddia ediyorlar. Umarım da öyle olur. Ee, so... Okay, we talk about the uh, complicating things, but uh, I'm asking one question for simple crypto investors. Okay, in how many days is Rui earned the players? Mostly. Okay. It depends on your luck because the payback medium is like 25 days, but obviously you can get better NFTs and mm-hmm. in take the, your payback faster and it depends on the token value of the moment. So when you buy the token, if you are, uh, you are an investor, you can buy on a price and mm-hmm. take uh, your payback faster. Nice. 
Very, very nice. Ee, beş gün olabilir diyorlar arkadaşlar. Genellikle beş gün olacakmış ROI'ler haberiniz olsun. Ama diyor ki daha iyi NFT'lere sahip olursanız diyor. O daha iyi NFT'lerle daha hızlı da ROI alabilirsiniz diyor. Böyle bir proje için bence beş gün çok iyi yani. Like your project is five day ROI is amazing man. Luca. But I have something to, to increase because our game consists in three phases. Okay. Mm-hmm. The farm mode is usually the favorite mode of the community because it's simple and you make a lot of money on it. Mm-hmm. But it has a serious problem of sustainability because there is no progression of the players. The cycle is very short. Yeah. So, but just buy farm and sell, buy farm and sell. There is nothing that encourages players to reinvest or, or hold their tokens. That's why it's so important to have a sustainability plan because our protocol can never die. So farm yeah. mode may not exist forever and the rewards will certainly be gradually reduced because 25 days payback is not a healthy thing to mm-hmm. our economy. Therefore, gradual nerfs will be made so as not to generate food and we will encourage people to go to the PVA mode and always have this progression on our game. Yeah, that's a really good thing. Uh... Arkadaşlar 3 çeyrek olacağını söylüyor oyununda. Bunu her zaman yani daha deminden beri belirtiyorlar zaten. 3 çeyreği olacağını söylüyorlar. Bunun birincisi farm olacak ve farmdan fazla para kazanabilirsiniz diyor. Ama bizim için diyor en önemli şey stabilite. Yani bu coin'in stabilitesi ve eminim ki onu da tutmak için ellerinden geleni yapacaklardır. Tekrar oyuncularının yatırım yapmasını istiyorlar bu oyuna. Çünkü farming mod açılacak fakat sonrasında pvp mod gelecek vesaire bunlar için... Asla ölmeyecek. Tekrar söyledi. Luca da söyledi. Asla ölmeyecek. Never dying project. Asla ölmeyecek bir protokol olduğunu söylüyorlar. Şimdi bu soruyu da geçelim. <gülüyor> okay. So, uh, I have a one question for you too. Wait, my question is uh, really... Uh, wait, nerede? Burada bir yerde ben söylemiştim ya. Geç bunu. Bunu da geç. Ee, ben balinalarla alakalı şey yapmıştım ya. Soru sormuştum. Nerede o balinalarla alakalı? Neyse ben söyleyeyim. Okay. So, if your game uh, opening on the farming mode, I think Bailey's came to buy your tokens. You know? Uh, because they see the hype and they taking your tokens uh, on Pancake Web. You has any... Any anti-veil system for this, for the investors, protect your small investors or normal investors? So, regarding those kinds of systems, I have a lot of experience with anti-veil systems and those kinds of things because I, I also work with security audits for smart contracts. And one thing that I've seen in my experience is that these kinds of systems are very dangerous to use because they might actually end up hurting the smaller the smaller investors mm-hmm. why does that happen because those systems they work uh, by blacklisting users mm-hmm. so it's basically we have a smart contract for the token and that smart contract has a function where mm-hmm. you can actually blacklist the user and if you do so the user is unable to retrieve their funds so they can transfer their, their, their tokens their bananas to anyone and in our conception that kind of arbitrary blacklisting is not uh, what we want for the game so mm-hmm. we're not looking look, looking for, to enforce a hard ban on whales that's not how we're approaching this problem mm-hmm. our pro- approach is a economic and ge- game theoretical one so what we are doing basically is we have a staking program and mm. that staking program acts in a way to absorb and release liquidity as steep price uh, price dives and price rises happen. So if a whale does buy, what's going to happen is, let's let's say the the, the floating circulation of tokens is a hundred thousand. Someone goes there and buys fifty thousand. Mm-hmm. If that happens, the price is going to go way up in the, in the same second. What the protocol does is, when that happens, it immediately starts reducing staking rewards for for the token. Mm-hmm. And with that, what happens is people are incentivized to sell and get the the price back down so that it doesn't take the normal hit and the same thing since we reduce the, the the rewards what's going to happen is as the whale dumps we can increase the rewards back so that we remove liquidity from the market and get the price back up so yeah. it is an economic defense that stop whales from being able to profit on the token uh, if if they do large movements it's a it's not a straight ban it's mm-hmm. it's an economic mechanism that's very similar to the way that 
developing nations uh, use their central banks and their um, international reserves to to stop currency shocks that's a, a, a an economic f f theory framework we're using in the game here yeah nice thank you <gülüyor> thank you anthony uh, çok fazla şimdi şey sordum ben arkadaşlar dedim ki <gülüyor> mini devil dur söyleyeceğim onu bu arada evet çok benziyor ee, dedim ki bu anti veil sisteminiz var mı dedim balinalar için sonuçta bu kadar büyük bir oyun yapıyorsan yarın bir gün gözünün önüne sokarlar o tokunu alırlar tarzında konuştum ve anti veil sistemlerinin çok tehlikeli olduğunu söyledi kendince daha e, bu işte anti veil işinde defans işinde e, security işinde güvenlik işinde daha önce çok fazla tecrübesinin olduğunu söyledi ve böyle bir şey yapmayacağını söyledi fakat bunun için bir staking sistemi var dedi. Bu staking sistemiyle arkadaşlar yani diyor ki mesela e, coin mesela örnek veriyorum diyor gidiyor bir veil diyor oradan alıyor coin'i. Örneğin işte 5000 tane aldı. Coin yukarıya pump yaptı. Bu pump yaptığı zaman zaten diyor benim kullanıcılarım gidecek bunu satacaklar ve aynı yere stabilliğe geri gelecek diyor. Aynı şey diyor aşağısı için de geçerli diyor. Dumplar için de geçerli. Ne zaman bir dump olacaksa sonuçta diyor insanlar bize güvenecekler ve oyunumuza güvenecekler. Staking kısmından satış yapmadıkları sürece alınan tokenlarla beraber bir ekonomi defansı yarattıklarını söylüyor. Ve bu ekonomi defansıyla beraber de e, balinalara karşı kendilerini, bizleri, yatırımcılarını, oyuncularını koruyacağını söylüyorlar arkadaşlar. Okey. Evet. Yeah. And you can yeah, use that whales, mm -hmm. they are part of the act. The problem is projects with very early investors with large mm -hmm. amounts of tokens. This doesn't ha happen on our project. Because since ha I have seen projects that fought a battle with the whales and didn't turn out well like Crypto Gods, mm -hmm. you can see that. So whales, they are part of the ecosystem and they can help, can, they can be helpful for the, the, the project. They can stake their, their tokens. So this can be really good for the project, mm -hmm. for the project. Yeah, you, you're right. You're right. Luca diyor ki arkadaşlar, şu anda çok erken yatırımcılarız diyor. Very early yatırımcılarız. Yani e, bazı projeler direkt balinalar tarafından evet bitiriliyor. Fakat bazı projeler de balinalar, e, bazı projeleri de hype'lıyor diyor. Hani balinalar her zaman kötü şeyler değildir diyor. Ve biz tabii ki balinalara da ihtiyacımız var diyor açık açık yani. Haklı mı? Haklı. Bazı balinalar var ki bazı oyunlarda oyunu yukarıya taşıyorlar adamlar. E, we need same whales. Yeah, good whales. Yeah, you're right, Luca. So make them at the the very beginning of the project. Like we don't have these whales. Yet. You can see the on the best is can. So yeah. we are we are aware of this. Yeah, yeah. BSC scan'dan girip bakabilirsiniz diyor yani e, balinaların durumuna falan diyor. Onlara da biz gelecekte bakarız zaten. Okay. <coughs> Okay, right now, uh, this is the most important thing on the one game, you know, guys, uh, you need the communication with your community. Okay, uh, I see, I see you're uh, working on this situation because right now you can going, uh, came here and going to do Emma with me for the Turkish community. This is a good thing, but uh, most people is, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. My my pleasure. Uh, so much people want to earn some things. You know, if he getting your Discord and get, going to the level up or invite event uh, and he they want a small uh, prizes, you know, you have any referral system on game or Discord for the crypto monkeys? Yeah. Time to time is we do some giveaways like to boost our, our social media like Twitter, best tweets, best fan arts. We do mm -hmm. this kind of, in, and obviously we do that with the, our partners like you. So Thank we you. do our, the community because this is pretty important to make the, them happy. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> Arkadaşlar, yeah. referral sistemi de olacakmış ha? Yeah, Anthony. So say it, it's not confirmed yet. We can't really uh, say when it's gonna happen, but we are planning a a airdrop for for some of the early early buyers as, as well in the next week. So hmm. something to keep keep notice of. Wow, okay. 
Okey. Ee, arkadaşlar şimdi referans sisteminiz var mı dedim. İnsanlar dedim sizin için aktif oldukları zaman örnek veriyorum hani bir şeyler kazanmak istiyorlar dedim vesaire. Ne yapacaksınız dedim bunlarla alakalı ve e, giveaway'ler yapacaklarını söylediler. Twitter üzerinden, Discord üzerinden ve benim gibi influencerlarla beraber. Sadece Türk komitesi için değil bu arada. Crypto Monkeys Discord'unu takip ederseniz yabancılar da var. Hani onlarla da yapacaklarmış ve bu şekilde giveaway'ler düzenleyeceklermiş size ve bir tane trik verdi Antony sağ olsun bize. Gelecek hafta bir drop olacakmış arkadaşlar. Olabilir. Hint. Hint for uh, stream. Gelecek hafta. Bu arada Discord'u bombalayın. Crypto Monkeys Discord'unu bir bombalayın şeye çete. E, moderatörler. Girmeyenler varsa girsinler. Okay. <gülüyor> e, I see the minting pace for the portals. E, but we yeah. e, think about the monkeys. Okay. Yeah. okay. So the beta is coming. We decide uh -huh. to work with the with prob probabilities to bring more dynamics for our ecosystem of the farm mode. For that, we need to rebuild the NFTs contracts and start developing the new mode this week because we are the the last version would be like Crypto U and we decide to go with the probabilities. So it's ready. I have already tested last day, but just need to improve the new designs. Farm will look like with a, a roulette wheel, so players will select their the NFTs to work, and every eight hours they will, will be able to spin, and you got two options. So 80% mm -hmm. chance of get, oh, landing on a workstation level one, and 20% chance of landing on a level two. So which is, has a, a very high reward multiplier, because if the NFT is not able to do level two work, you, you will not gain anything for that turn. So I don't remember now the value of the upgrade, but it's pretty good because It stimulate people to reinvest and upgrade their NFTs. Okay. Okay. Yeah, the, the value for the upgrade is going to be 3,000 bananas. So we're going to be able to upgrade our NFTs to level 2. And what happens is on that wheel, if you, if you, if you, if you get on the level 2 to level two, two site on, on the wheel each time you play, you actually multiply your rewards by 6 times. So you get a lot more rewards if, you're, if your NFT is level 2 and you hit the jackpot. But if you end up hitting the jackpot without being level two, you end up with nothing. So it's kind of a, a dynamic that makes the game more interesting, more mm -hmm. profitable for those who upgrade their NFTs. And if you're not lucky, it can take a, away a little bit of our earnings if you do not upgrade. So it's a, a, a nicer dynamic to, to help us play a, a, a better user interaction on fire mode. Yeah. From other games. And so this mode will probably be released today, tomorrow. You have a, a scheduled date. Yeah, so, I see that. Like, like Lucas was saying, the the mode's ready. It's it's already operational. What we're doing right now on the team is we're we're trying to build a nicer interface because since we this idea came in the in the last week, it was a, a, mm -hmm. a le, le, last moment upgrade to the to the game. Our designer didn't have the time to actually build the interface, so we're we're finalizing it now because we want to release even a beta that looks looks cool. Yeah. And then after that, we're gonna, gonna release it to a. a a, a no value version where the users can just play to see how it how it works and next week on the on the launch date they're going to be able to finally use their actual monkeys to play and actually earn but start earning ban bananas from it nice nice arkadaşlar ee, şunu sordum hani banana token da alakalı değil de hani maymunlarla alakalı dedim. Ee, maymunlar ne zaman gelecek dedim. Hani ne yapabileceğiz, ne zaman başlayabileceğiz tarzında. Ee, beta'nın geldiğini hatta beta şu anda açıkmış arkadaşlar. Bu beta'da dinamiklerin çok e, detaylı olduğunu ve ekosistem için tekrar bir çalışma yaptıklarını söylüyor. En son Antonio onu söyledi. Hani daha iki gün önce falan e, yeni bir şey yaptıklarını söylüyor ve bunu yaptıkları için kontratlar tekrar yenileniyormuş farm modu yüzünden. Ve e, bizim farm modumuzda şimdi şans olarak bu insanlara şans olarak gelecekmiş. %20 olarak level 2, %80 olarak level 1 bir e, yerimiz olacak. Burada diyor ki level 1 kişiler gidip level 2'ye upgrade ettikleri zaman kendi e, yerlerini, çalışma yerlerini farming modda level 2'yi yaptıkları takdirde 2'ye katlıyorlar kazançlarını direkt diyor. Yani e, banana tokenla bunun karşılığında banana token verilecekmiş ve 2'ye katlayacaklar multiplayer ve herkesin bunu yapması gerekecek. Ve bundan da, bu arada bombalamayın, e, bundan da e, tabii ki yakıma gidecek tokenlar. E, the leveling up e, tokens. Yeah, we use banana, right? This banana is yeah. going to be burned or? They are burned. They are burned. Yeah. 
Nice. Evet. Ve bu bananaların hepsi yakılacak arkadaşlar. Yani level 1'dan level 2'ya geçtiğiniz zaman bütün bananalar yakılacak. Agalar mükemmel. Çok güzel. Okay. Uh, so I have one question to after this we talking about the community for the questions. We take questions for you and I'm asking for you. Uh, Na, last thing, do you planning collab to another project? You have a hint for us. So we've been in touch with some different projects uh, up, to, up to this moment, but we haven't closed any deals yet. What we're looking for is actually a partner that's going to be part of the monkey metaverse uh, on, on the future. So we're looking for games that are, are sustainable and are serious on the on regarding technology mm -hmm. we've been talking to some people we cannot disclose anything yet but we're probably going to be announcing a a, a partner uh, closer to the date of the of the launch of of our actual game mode the, the strategy mode so that we can actually show a little more of the roadmap for the mm -hmm. for the entire metaverse structure that's going to count with different game modes and also different interactions between nfts okay so you cannot tell tell any project name right now but uh, they use the technology or metaverse yeah. thing yeah yeah we we can disclose the names because we're still negotiating we haven't yeah. closed any deals we have some people talking to us mm -hmm. but uh, it, it, it, it anything has nothing has been written into contracts yet but uh -huh. it's gonna be a metaverse partner we're not gonna be partnering with with simple simple games that, that are short-lived we're gonna be partnering with with some larger games that are yeah that are a, a, a, long, a longer longer life cycle This is the most important thing I I think uh, any project. Arkadaşlar başka projelerle anlaşmak istiyor musunuz dedim. Hani böyle bir bize bir dedim trik verin falan hani ismini söylemedi. Kapattı ismini ama dedi tabii ki e, biz de dedi başka projelerle anlaşacağız dedi ve bu projeler de e, sağlam projeler olmalı dedi. Stabil projeler olacak dedi. Teknolojiyle alakalı projeler olacak dedi. Zaten görüşmeleri şu anda varmış. Ama şöyle bir e, İsim vermeden konuştular. Okay. Uh, so. Uh, uh, ask the chat. Arkadaşlar. Herhangi bir sorunuz var mı? Crypto Monkeys ile alakalı. Luca'ya veya Antoni'ye. İkisi de oyun geliştiricisi ve Antoni zaten developerlığını yapıyor projenin. Luca. Luca you just like a Turkish people. You know you. You uh, you like my cousin. I sent him picture for you. Yeah. You. <gülüyor> Where do you live Luca? You have any Turk. On your family. Oh yeah, I come a little later, so I don't, I couldn't introduce myself. Uh -huh. But my name is. I'm one of the co-founders of Crypto Monkeys. I work with community management. I do the work of managing influencers, moderators, uh -huh. and marketing. And I'm not a blockchain developer, but I have experience and knowledge gained from playing and many other other projects and studying the crypto market. And I was the the creator of this project. I'm passionate about the play churn model, and I believe a lot in the potential. And I think this market is just beginning. Not mm -hmm. not long ago, I decided to create my own games. So this is when Crypto Monkeys had had started, and I started looking for qualified people who were interested in developing this project with me. And unfortunately, yeah. I don't have any known friends who are from this area. So I started by looking on blockchain engineers and 3D models on YouTube, LinkedIn, and anything, yeah. anything else. And arranging meetings, introducing my concept. And I met Anthony through a project he developed, a, a casino that works entirely on blockchain mm -hmm. in Vegas. And I got in touch with, with the team. And, and now we, we, we, we met in his own, our CTO. I found Giuliano through his YouTube channel. He's a, a renowned and very talented artist. We had a, a, a meeting and he liked the idea. Yeah. So that's how our team came about. It's crazy, but yeah, everything <laughs> pretty good. But uh, you guys, very good uh, profile, you know, very good profile. So I'm looking at Lucas. Okay, tell me the coin or, the, or tell me the game. Okay, I'm in. Uh, looks like uh, you, you look like very trustly, man. Yeah. About the okay, Crypto Monkeys has a, a strong inspirations from the the NFT market. Mm -hmm. Such as the Bored Ape that Neymar ha has buy one. We know that monkeys are, are hyped in the, the world of cryptos. Mm -hmm. And we took the opportunity to use the, them in, in our project. So the evolution of uh, the primates, uh, the, the, the monkeys, we were inspired by the, the movie plan of 
Planet of the Apes. So our game assets like scenes and scenarios and the NFTs evolution of the, the they go from the prehistory to the future and to play and earn money there is uh, you, you need to buy these nfts and start doing the tasks so basically that's the how the game the game week let, let's say like this mm -hmm. but the the goals of our project our goal with the, this game is to bring a game that people enjoy to buy their nfts because mm -hmm. we are we are inspired by nft collections art collections so and and be able to to help many people earn a passive income at the end of the month so without many complications because we, it's a simple game we are developing yeah that's why we give so much importance to the visual aspect of the of our nfts and we are going to always bring game modes and simple to understand and play being accessible to all profiles mm -hmm. i think this is really important I think, I think you. Arkadaşlar, e, Lucas diyor ki öncelikle kendini tanıttı. Kendinin daha önce kript, e, kripto olaylarında vesairesinde hani tam anlamıyla e, hiçbir şey yapmadığını yani böyle development kısmında vesaire çok tecrübesi olmadığını fakat e, Vegas'ta bir kazino sahibi işte bir arkadaşlarıyla görüştükleri zaman orada tanışmışlar işte konuşmuşlar böyle projemi yapacağız diye e, sonrasında takımı oluşturmuşlar. Anthony de o takımın aslında başı gibi duruyor şu anda. Anthony development kısmında daha tecrübeli ve e, nereli olduğunu söyledi. Yani tam olarak e, bilgi vermeyeceğim şu anlık dedi. Şu anlık hani o kadarını gizliyoruz dedi ama ileride dedi onları açıklayacaklarmış. <gülüyor> <gülüyor> dur dur Apo. Ondan sonra e, oyunla alakalı bilgiler verdi ve oyunla alakalı şunu söylüyor. Biz diyor ölmeyen bir oyun yapmak istiyoruz. Bunları ağzında sürekli bu var ve pasif getiri sağlamak istiyoruz. Pasif inkam sağlamak istiyoruz insanlara diyor. Bu pasif inkamı sağladığımız zaman çok da böyle komplike bir oyunumuz yok diyor. Yani oyun diyor basic bir oyun. Herkesin oynayabileceği bir oyun. Ve bu oyundan diyor güven yani... Aslında baktığınız zaman adamların kafa yapısı çok güzel bir kafa yapısı. Aradığımız bir kafa yapısı. Bizim yatırımcı olarak baktığımız zaman tabii ki yatırım tavsiyesi değildir. Fakat baktığımız zaman yatırımcı olarak bizi düşünen insanlar arkadaşlar. Bunlar bizi düşünen oyun sahipleri. Anlatabiliyor muyum? Bu adamların buraya gelip yani onu anlatmaya çalışıyor adam. Biz diyor iyi şeyler başaracağız. Biz diyor güvenli iş yapacağız diyorlar. Ve zaten güvenli iş yapmasalar burada ne işleri var yani. O yüzden benim bir kere daha... Ee, gözüme girmiş oldular öyle diyeyim. Ee, thank you so much Lucas. Ee, so I'm uh, adding my parts to on your speaking or Anthony speaking you know because uh, this is the most important thing I uh, tell before the stream to uh, we speak with Anthony. This is a trusting you know. If you yeah. yeah if I'm getting your game and I lose money oh I don't care you know because you You communicate uh, on the community. You know, you show your face and you spend time for this. Uh, you yeah, explain right. everything, you know. This is a very important thing. Yeah. yeah. Anthony, uh, you. Uh, Sorry, my microphone. My yeah. mic was off, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So what, what you're asking? You, you just like a Should Thor, you know. You are a, a <laughs> Scandinav uh, god. You know, uh, what do you living? You are developer, I think. This is a game. Uh, game development things is on your side, I think, right? Yeah. What I do is I'm the C the, the, the CTO. So what that, that means is I actually manage a team of developers. Mm -hmm. Particularly, my experience is not on game develop; it's on blockchain development. So on the mm -hmm. blockchain side of things, I develop smart contracts, tokens, NFTs. DeFi protocols and these kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. What we do when we develop a, a game like this one, or in fact any games, is you have to combine blockchain engineering on one side with game engineering on the other one. Yeah. And what is each one? So blockchain engineering, as I told you, is developing smart contracts. Game engineering is front end, so it's developing like a website where people have an interface where they can play the game, and that somehow communicates with the blockchain. Yeah. The first version of the game that is the farm mode. It's a a simpler version so the, the game engineering part is not that complicated the blockchain engineer part is still complicated but the gaming part is more simple on the second part of the game where, where coming next is the strategy mode we're actually going to be using a software it's called mm -hmm. the unreal engine it's a a game development software that's very specialized on that part we're going to have we have a specific engineer so a person that is specializes on the game the gaming part of development yeah what we, we do is not only we develop we manage a technology team this is like a startup 
we have a, a whole tech team dedicated to, to building the game and to making this thing succeed. That's mm, what, yeah. what we're after. Yeah, you have, think, you have a very I good th team, I think. Yeah. I think it would be nice to talk about the, the PvP and team. Yeah, okay. yeah, uh, so, wait. I, I asking on PvP, wait. Uh, arkadaşlar, <gülüyor> Anthony diyor ki, yani diyor biz diyor takımımızdaki development kısmıyla ben ilgileniyorum. Ama diyor ben diyor blockchain kısmıyla ilgileniyorum diyor. Blockchain kısmında development'ını yani Anthony yapıyor. Fakat bizim diyor oyunla diyor PvP yan yana getirdiğiniz zaman başlangıçta diyor blockchain daha ağır basıyor diyor. Blockchain'i ben hallediyorum. Ama diyor ikinci phase'de en önemli şey en sona sakladım. I keep it a lasting PvP strategy thing. Ee, e, oraya geldiğimiz zaman diyor orada diyor devreler bu şekilde geliyor diyor. Devreler buraya geldiği zaman game e, designerlar yani game developmentlar burada oluyor blockchain burada oluyor diyor. Şimdi sorularınızı alayım ve ben şeyi söyleyeceğim. Yani PvP ve strateji ile alakalı bu arada seslerini tekrar yükselttim. Bir kere daha yükselttim sizin için. Ee, ben PvP olayını çok merak ediyorum. Strateji olayını çok merak ediyorum oyundaki. <gülüyor> Token'ın çıkış fiyatı ve ondan sonra nereye geleceği onu... Ee... Okay, onu sorarız. I taking questions right now on the chat. After this we uh, we are getting closer to strategy and PvP thing. Okay guys, okay. because this is the most important thing I, uh, I think. This is the most important thing on the game. Yeah, every game we going to play to earn things, click click. But no, this game uh, deserve us, uh, service us to PvP and strategy mode. Uh, we are childhood, we playing Age of Mythology or something. We uh, we are getting yeah. yeah, we are getting grow up with strategy. You know, strategy games. So this is the important thing. Yeah. Yeah. Which will be like a tower defense style game. Will be very simple to play, and everyone will be able to understand the mechanisms. Mm -hmm. So the, the interesting thing is that it will encourage reinvestment of the people to to reach the best levels and collect the best rewards. Yeah. So size the amount of the NFTs in your wallet will be decisive for your progress on this game. Mm -hmm. the, that's why it's very good to for you you take to yeah, advantage of the beginning of the game to farm and prepare for the next updates. And you always uh, game I'll always have this progression to yeah. PvP then PvP and start with the farm mode. So this is very helpful for economic. Uh, also, yeah. these uh, pictures, in-game pictures, right? Unreal Engine pictures. We can see it on the white paper or uh, this is a real uh, looks, right? Yeah. yeah. yeah. Okay, go ahead, Anthony. Yeah, they have all been developed inside of a 3D development platform, so they are all mm -hmm. real images. And actually, those images, they are just a snippet of the of the environment because for instance, the cave there, the castle, you can actually get inside of those. They are, they are like full structures. This is just a picture that we took from it. Yeah. But it's a, a full structure where you can actually get inside of them. You can see around it. So it's it's a, a true 3D model. It's not only a picture. That's the, the cool thing yeah. about it. Yeah. They are powered by this Cinema 4D and mm -hmm. really, I guess, for version, version, not the, the 5. But talk, talk about the, the basketball on the, on the picture, Anthony that are signed by LeBron James. Uh, yeah, one of the cool things, there, there are lots of Easter eggs in, in each of those of those environments. The, the coolest one for me is on the, the crypto investor's office. If you look at there, there are some basketballs mm -hmm. uh, on top of his table. Those basketballs are actually signed by, by important basketball players. So there's LeBron James, Whoa. Michael Jordan, and Magic. Kobe Bryant. Which was Magic. Magic. Magic Johnson. Magic Johnson. Because, uh, so it, the designer actually put their signatures into the balls there. That's inspired by a, a TV series called, called Suit, Suits, where, where it's a lawyer that has those balls. Whoa. A cool, very cool Easter egg. Whoa. You're creating a real game, guys. Easter eggs or some things, you know, monkeys. I see these pictures. I am very exciting right now, too, because uh, if I'm getting in this game, so uh, t calling my friend uh, Halil, come here, woo -woo, we are going to fight. 
together because e, 3D graphics is very good. Okay. Arkadaşlar ben sordum yani dedim ki hani bak white paper'ı açtığınız zaman zaten white paper'da şöyle gör yani görebilirsiniz şöyle white paper'ı açalım. Mesela burada işte maymun resimleri var vesaire. <gülüyor> Ondan sonra yani kendi own village'larımız var vesairelerimiz var. Burada zaten araştırdığınız zaman görürsünüz bunlar dedim gerçeği yansıtıyor mu? Yani biz bunları oyunu oynarken oynayacağız mı dedim arkadaşlar. Evet. Oynayacakmışız ve oyunun içerisine easter egg'ler yerleştirdiklerini söylüyorlar. Bu easter egg'lerden bir tanesinde mesela kripto ofisi varmış. İçeri girdiğinde işte e, basketbol muhabbetleri varmış. Onların içerisinde baktığınız zaman işte LeBron James, Kobe Bryant e, gibi büyük isimlerin easter egg'lerini koymuşlar. Bu sadece bir hint bizim için. One hint. I think e, most easter egg in your game because e, your blow is mind e, very good. This is a one tick. I think just a basketball thing, you know. Sadece basketbol olayı olduğunu düşünüyorum Easter Egg olarak. Yani bayağı oyun yapıyorlar arkadaşlar. Bayağı oyun yapıyorlar. Okay. Uh, how much price is banana token after this week? Uh, uh, you, uh, the decision on Dex this next Sunday. Mm -hmm. The idea. The, the price is it on, at 9 cents of dollar. Okay. Duydunuz gibi. 90 Sorry. cents, right? Yeah, right. Okay. 9, 9. 9. Okay. Just a 9. Okay. On the pre sale for 7 cents, it's already it's going to be start start the sale at the at 9. But mm -hmm. the thing is, we have to buy early because probably what's going to happen when we launch the token is people going to go buy it and the price is going to go up. So there's going to be an upside there for people who actually get in early and use it to my to meet their monkeys right mm -hmm. from the start if you, if you take too long it might be more expensive okay. yes and and i was saying that uh, we are very cautious about early investors with big amounts because this can can affect the the launch of the game so yeah we sold all the pre-sale tokens that we made available but the supply was too large and it won't it wouldn't make sense at the moment we sell mm -hmm. all these tokens so i prefer to focus on, on ido that will be listed on Pancake Swap next day, next Sunday. And the public pre-sale had a vesting period, so you, you you don't have to worry about the pump and dump you know, on the first on the first candle, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, we talk about the Pancake Swap. You planning to CMC? Coin market cap? Or... Yeah, yeah. Pancake yeah. yeah. or two. Gecko two, okay. Okay, yeah. uh, I'm taking questions on the chat right now. Uh, I'm asking this. After this, I uh, speak about uh, strategy thing. Arkadaşlar, ön satış olarak 0.07 centten çıkmış. Yani 7 cent diyebiliriz buna. Uh, şu anlık fiyatı 9 cent olacak diyorlar. Ama uh, şu an çok erken bir süreçte izliyorlar. Bu erken süreç için çok fazla bir budget ayarladıklarını söylüyorlar. Early uh, yatırımcıları için ve early yatırımcılarının kazanmasını istiyorlar. Açık açık fiyatları da çok minimal tutmuşlar. Also, uh, your NFT uh, prices low too. You think about the small investors for this, right? Everyone is came to play your game, guys. Exactly. Everyone. Everyone can play. You can be. A, you can have same NFTs. You can have just one. It depends mm -hmm. on your profile. And the thing is, lots of games are charging a real high amount just to get yeah. in. Yeah. Our idea is to allow people more players to get in because we like small players. Mm -hmm. Small players make their game sustainable. Big players usually dip more tokens and they, they have a different behavior that is not so good for the economy in the long run. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I joined you on this thing. Arkadaşlar şey diyor, hani e, bizim oyunumuzu diyor herkes oynayabilir diyor ve bizim için en önemli şey diyor düşük yatırımcı. Zaten düşük yatırımcı bizi stabil götürür diyor. Fakat diyor düşük yatırımcı değil de büyük yatırımcıya odaklanırsak diyor birçok oyun diyor fazla parayla girişi charge diyor insanları zorluyorlar diyor. Ama bizde öyle bir şey yok diyorlar çok küçük miktarlarda çok e, e, küçük paralar verip oyuna girebilirsiniz diyorlar ve en önemli şeyin small investors olduğunu söylüyorlar. E, oyunun herhangi bir hacklemesine karşı kullanıcılar mağdur kalırsa ne yapacaklar? E, Hype Loot asking e, for this. Also Richie asking on CMC question. So Hype Loot is asking e, for you if your game going to be hacked, e, what do you do because, e, on your players? Oh, okay. I'll... go ahead, Anthony. Yeah, the the, the... hacking is my special specialty. So let me answer this one. 
company, so we are pretty safe here. <laughs> yeah. So, the thing about hacking is, what can a hacker actually do to destroy the game? So basically, there are two things that a hacker can do. One, he can mess with the logic of the game, so he, he can do something to the country that's gonna make the game not work. Yeah. That's gonna mean we ha our team will have to go in, remove the, the, the exploit, and actually put the game back online. That doesn't hurt the player. The most that it does is it actually is gonna make the game go offline for a couple of days. Yeah. And there's a second option for hacking, which is stealing assets. So if a hacker is able to steal assets directly from the game pools or, di or, the, or directly from the contracts, this is the main problem. And we do mitigate that in two ways. So the first way is obviously by auditing. Our code has been internally audited, so all the code is revealed and audited by, by everyone on the team. And we also got an external audit from tech audits, and we plan to get more audits as we, as we go on, because having different companies audit you is always a best practice. Mm -hmm. Yes, and I, I will be honest with you guys. Most hackers that you see on Playtron games, they are made by internal people. Because blockchain is so safe, because yeah, it's not easy to hack BSC. You know, it's free. Like your home, hack. you know. Every, uh, I see everything is people's uh, wrongs. You know, they they going to sign another things. They going to any side and sign it and uh, stolen. Yeah. Well, just you know, this is I, I cannot see any project. Oh, all tokens is uh, going to taken. I cannot see any hack on the blockchain like this. Uh, but you have a plan for this too. Uh, okay, this is not. Yeah, yeah this is not yeah, a, a real yeah. thing. But you have planet for this. Nice. In, in case it happens, because it, it can always happen. In case mm -hmm. it happens, we have a exit plan where we're going to duplicate the tokens and hand them back to their original owners, remove the liquidity pool for as long as, as the exploit is happening and deploy a new one once we fixed all issues. So we're going to do Whoa. everything to stop anyone from losing their assets. That's the, We have a contingency plan for it. Nice, nice guys. Arkadaşlar şöyle e, hype loot şöyle diyeyim hani blockchain'de özellikle play to earn oyunlarda hacklenme bu kadar çok mümkün olan şeyler değil. Genellikle kişisel hatalar dolayısıyla insanlar hackleniyor. Ama Antonilerin bunun için bir planı varmış. Her zaman için e, açık kodları var ve arkada kodları var. Arka kodlarında her şey duplicate ediliyor. Yani diyor ki mesela bizim sitemizi hackledi birisi. Kapatır ya yani kapanır site diyor. Bir iki gün diyor offline oluruz tahminen diyor. Sonra tekrar biz açarız zaten diyor. Team bunu halleder diyor. Veya işte aynı şekilde coinler için söyledi. Böyle bir şey olamaz. Olamaz ama yine de onun için de işte arkadan duplicate yapmışlar hani coinleri. Şey gibi düşünebilirsin bunu. Hani snapshot alınıyor falan ya diğer projelerde de bu var. Hani bunu yaptık diyor. Yarın bir gün diyor böyle bir şey olursa diyor. Bu şekilde geri e, kullanıcılarımıza bir şeyleri karşılarız. Yani kullanıcılarımız hiçbir şekilde bir şey kaybetmez diyorlar bununla alakalı. IQ, IQ sistemini e, sorabilir misin demiş. Tamamdır hemen soralım. E, Chichila is asking you to IQ system on the monkeys. Sorry, I, I didn't understand. Yeah, I didn't understand either. IQ, IQ system. On the Mikey, monkey's IQ. On the white paper. Mike. Yeah. Uh, wait. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry, Miko. Uh, huh, uh, IQ uh, level. What you said. Can you please repeat? Yeah, yeah. He, uh, he's asking IQ level on the monkey's. Ah, on, on the mountain. Ah, okay. Uh -huh. IQ level. IQ How level. Oh, the IQ level. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's so asking the IQ it. Level, the IQ level is... The, the way we opted to do it is that each monkey type has a different IQ level that is assigned to it. For this moment, what happens is every monkey is born with the same IQ level. Hmm. Because that would be that's going to be fa more fair when we release the, the actual... EVP and, and, and, and P2E game, mm -hmm. game modes. But there are some features we're thinking of that will allow a, a monkey to actually increase his IQ or decrease it uh, as, as you play the, the game. Those are still being studied, but they are already implemented inside of the, the contract. So we, we, we could choose to implement them in the game um, when we see fit. That's the, the plan. Nice. Yes, the IQ attribute is more for the PV and PVP. We choose mm -hmm. to use the same IQ for the same type of monkeys because make the, the, the game more simple to, to balance the, the whole project. Yeah, I think uh, 
we must train our monkey for IQ level on the game, right? Uh, they are going to be upgrading themselves, uh, but uh, in the start, all monkeys is same IQ level is really favoriting, guys. If if you want it, you take more money, and uh, I give you five IQ level monkeys, you know. But you cannot doing it. You can give everyone same IQ levels monkeys. Nice, arkadaşlar. Maymun levelları PV e, PV ne? Ya? PVA ve PVP de önemli olacak şeylermiş ve Burada diyor biz mintlediğimiz zaman bütün maymunların IQ level'ı aynı olacakmış. Yani ee, daha adil olduğunu düşünüyorlar. Daha iyi olduğunu düşünüyorlar ve IQ'ları aynı olacakmış. PVA ve PVP'de bunlar bizim için önemli olacakmış. Şöyle bir aşağı doğru indiriyorum. Ya valla adamları ben e, kendi fikrimi sorarsanız arkadaşlar. Sevdim ya yani. Bilmiyorum bizi düşünüyorlar gibi ya. Köri teşekkürler abone olduğun için ayrıca. Serverları nerede? Hey gide kekleyek çiçile. Sizle. Uh, your servers on the uh, Vegas or they asking this question <laughs> on the chat. Where's uh, their services? <laughs> they came to stolen your server. I think I don't know. This this still our servers. <laughs> yeah, that's not possible, yeah. guys. Just to let you know. <laughs> <laughs> Sizi ben soracağım soruya. Allah'ım ya Rabbim ya. Yok orak pul muhabbetlerini konuştuk. Yok yok öyle bir şey yok arkadaşlar. Bakıyorum ya. Serverlar ne demek benim için? Manyak mısın ya? Uh, Richie is uh, asking for you. Uh, if you're doing uh, audit verification uh, service you can uh, take out. Yeah. yeah. You can see that the already is already mm -hmm. finished. Hı hı. Yapıyorlarmış kardeşim. Okay. Uh, so let's go into PVP and ah. There is just one problem with the, the audit because the the liquidity pool wasn't renounced yet. Mm -hmm. We are going to do that. This is pretty important to show transparency for the investors. Mm -hmm. yeah. But yeah. we are approved in all in all assets. Okay. But ready. Yeah. yeah. Ee, yapıyorlarmış fakat diyor hani tamamen yüzde yüz tra transparan bir şekilde yapacağız diyor bu arada audit muhabbeti için her şey hazırmış ee, yapmışlar. Okay, let's go into last thing, strategy and PVP. What is this? What, what I'm doing on the game? You know I have a monkeys or monkey army, so I'm going to uh, send my enemies. You know we can burn it. Uh, I don't know what what have I done on the game. Well, so the two modes are similar. They are inspired by strategy games such as Age of Empires mm -hmm. and also by tower defense games. So they are a mix of both. The idea is you're gonna have your monkey village. So let's first talk about player versus enemy. So the the actual game version against the server, not against other players. Mm -hmm. You're gonna have a village and you have to defend it. How do you defend it? You set up some defense towers with your monkeys, so for instance, you can set up a defense tower using your meta monkey, using your cave monkeys, and, and etc. And you can also send your monkeys to battle uh, as troops, so you can you can use them as an army. And what happens is there are going to be invaders coming in in, in rounds, so round one, round two, round three, and they are going to be getting stronger and stronger and stronger, and your goal into the game is to always defend them. Whenever you defend an entire round and keep your monkey village alive, mm -hmm. you get a banana reward. You can only mm -hmm. play this game like once per day so that uh, people don't farm too much, too many bananas. You can play more with, without uh, actually gaining bananas for the, for the game, but you can only play four, four bananas one time a day. And each round that goes yields more bananas for the player if he wins. But in order to get to higher rounds, you need to have a, a larger army, you need to have more monkeys, because if you don't have the monkeys, You're gonna get stuck into a point where you, you can't really put any more troops into the game because you don't have any NFTs in your collection, and you end up with a lot of cash inside the game, but you can't use it. So basically, you're gonna be defending the tower, the, the tower, just defending your your city for the most rounds, and that's the, the PVE. Mm -hmm. The PVP game, it's kind of that, but with two different villages. So there are two villages. You have to destroy your enemy's village. You can both. Yeah. Tower, defensive towers and send troops to to at, at, attack their village. The one that destroys the monkey village of the enemy first is the winner, 
And the way the game works, both players, they stake an amount of bananas. So for instance, I'm going to put a thousand bananas. Lucas will put another thousand. We're going to fight. Whoever wins is going to take the two thousand bananas for himself. And the other one's going to lose everything. Whoa. So to make this, this lobby uh, fair to every kind of players, we are separate them in, in lobbies. Like mm -hmm. a lobby. The maximum of NFTs that you can use in battle, so so the the battle will be fair. It it, it won't happen that you go uh, against a player that have the double or the triple NFTs you, you mm -hmm. got. Okay, this is a good thing for this beginning, right? Yeah, yeah. This is a beginning. On the metaverse, oh, if game is uh, going to blowing up. This yeah. we makes more uh, actions, I think. Yeah. One of the ideas for the metaverse is for everyone to have their own monkey village, mm -hmm. like in a monkey world. So that would be lands to buy. Open world. That would be interact. Yes, yeah, it would be like a monkey world, like Whoa. a planet of the apes. That would be the, the idea behind it. And there, there will be land, there will be our own village. We're going to be adding different features on this side of things. It would kind of rem remind us of games such as. Clash of Clans uh, and other games where you have your city and revolve it. Uh, and uh, we are also going to find ways to implement the entire battling uh, mechanic inside of the, of this game. So to be able to actually be able to battle with their, their cities and destroy each other. We don't yet know if you want to make a, a game like per season, where each season you start out, build your city and you destroy others. And if you lose, you're out. Or if you want to build like a perpetual game where you just improve your city. We may have both versions, but this is still open for debate. Metaverse is still a long way, way to go before we. Yeah, go. yeah, we we have a road on uh, here. If we going to this road and going to metaverse, uh, so much thing is coming from you and your game, guys. Okay, I explain the chat. Arkadaşlar, PVA modu olacakmış. İki PVA modu olacak. Birisi defans, birisi saldırı. Tamam mı? Edge of Empires gibi düşünebilirsiniz. Başıncı. Bir diğerini de tower defans diye düşünebilirsiniz. Nasıl olacak? Hani bir köy olacak. Oraya saldırabileceğiz. Maymunlarımız olacak. Bu maymunlarla oraya direkt bombalamasyon girebileceğiz. Ama bir de wave wave savaşlar gelecek. Örnek veriyorum. Ee, sizin köyünüze maymunlar saldıracak. Birinci wave, ikinci wave, üçüncü wave. Her wave daha da zor gelecek. Ve bizim maymunlarımız bunları def edebilirse, kazanabilirse, hayatta kalabilirlerse ne olacak arkadaşlar? Banana kazanacağız. Ama daha fazla banana kazanmak istiyorsak. Örneğin dördüncü wave'e geçmek istiyorsam daha fazla maymun alıp. Ordumu genişletmem gerekecek. Yani wave sayısını arttırmak için daha çok maymunla ihtiyacım var. PvP kısmına gelirsek şu anlık ayrı iki ayrı köy olacak ve bunların defansları ve saldıranları olacak. PvE'deki aynı muhabbet gibi ama e, şöyle bir şey lobiler kurulacak bunun için. Örnek veriyorum %100 bir kapışma. 100 banana o koyuyor 100 banana ben koyuyorum. Ben orduma güveniyorum. İkimiz kapışıyoruz. Kazanan ortadaki bütün bananaları alacak arkadaşlar. İleride Metaverse olduğu zaman da arkadaşlar olur olur hype loot olur o ee, soracağım şimdi ileride Metaverse zamanında bu tabii ki Metaverse zamanında open world bir e, monkey maymun dünyası olacağını ve burada herkesin landlerinin köylerinin olacağını burada da girip direkt böyle e, köyü yok etme gibi bu tarzda şeyler olabilir diyor bu tabii ki buna gelene kadar önümüzde çok yol var diyor eğer bunlar olduktan sonra zaten biz her şeyi yaparız bununla alakalı diyorlar arkadaşlar uh, so last question is pvp thing uh, i can on metaverse or uh, right now on the pvp mode we can create a clans or uh, guilds on the game monkey guilds i don't know we can doing it i think metaverse yeah Yeah. Oh, right now here too, on the PvP. Right now, this feature is still not available. Uh -huh. uh, PvP is not been built yet. The goal for PvP is for the end of the year, maybe start of the next one. Uh -huh. And we still have lots of things to implement. This is one thing that is on the roadmap. We don't know if it's gonna launch with the PvP, if it's gonna take a, a little more time to launch. But it's uh -huh. a feature we are surely aiming at for for our final metaverse uh, game game version. Okay, guys. So, thank you for your times. Luke and Anthony, I like to see you on my stream. So I upload this video YouTube too. Uh, also, I uh, I add subtitles. No, I, I I'm put on here. 
not uh, want a subtitle because we can speak <laughs> English and Turkish right now. So I can put on uh, here YouTube too. Uh, I'm really, really like your project. Also, really like your uh, characteristic specials or uh, your humanity. You know, you came here. Also, you spent times for us. Uh, we are, yeah, one hour. Over one hour. Yeah. It's always good to talk, man. I think this is the game in the end. It's us talking to the community and showing you guys what we're playing for. This is mm -hmm. great for us. Yeah, I, I, I speak a lot, uh, you and Anthony, on the future. Uh, this is a good thing for me, guys. Thank you so much for your time. You uh, can tell anything on the community or... Uh, Well, I'd like to say that uh, we're, we're very honored that the Turkish community is coming to the game. We really want to better serve you. And we're looking forward to have you guys join us on the IDO and start, start playing next week. It's going to be a pleasure to, to have you with us. Take the girls with their nails done now. Girls with their nails done now.